Well, I think the amazing thing about Handel is the way um, sort of changing performance practice has renewed it. As somebody who studied the 18th century professionally as a historian, I'm, I'm obviously interested in that period and interested in Handel's place within it and how Handel represents something to us about that society. And I think we've recaptured the sort of the life and the energy of the music. I think what's important in most Baroque music is this idea of rhetoric and the way that words, for example, can create colour. And what's so wonderful about an orchestra like the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment is that they listen to words and they're interested in what the words mean. have the accompanied recitative and the aria of Waft Her Angels, which is from the oratory of Jephthah. The scene is a, is a fantastic, very dark accompanied recitative where Jephthah asks for the day not, not to start, for the sun to hide because he doesn't want the day to start on which he's going to have to sacrifice his only child, his daughter. And then this extraordinary, hypnotic, wafting aria, Waft Her Angels and which he asks for her to be taken up into heaven. Recordings have been going wonderfully well, um, partly because we are so familiar with this music and I've worked a lot with this orchestra, but also Ian understands the style so beautifully and uh, you know there's no, I think we're all very much naturally going in the same direction with it, so it's, it's a real pleasure because sometimes these situations can be quite tense if pe people don't know each other or feel uncomfortable with each other's kind of musical style, but no, it's been a real pleasure. Samson, eyeless in Gaza, down at the mill with slaves, gives out this aria about the terrible suffocation and loneliness of being blind, total eclipse. Um, and it's, it has a sort of horrible historical irony in that Handel himself, you know, ten or so years later, became blind. So it has a sort of strange prophetic quality in that. But what's, it's an amazing aria because it's so... nothing really happens. Uh, it's very, very still and you can actually sing totally outside the tempo before the orchestra comes in and it has an incredible impact. Sun, moon and stars are to me. I had admired Ian's work for, for, for many years so it was a real joy when he asked me to take part in, in recording um, this Handel album. Um, especially because we had the chance to sing the most incredible hand and duet of all time, which is As Steals the Morn from, from Allegro. We're so familiar with the Messiah um, that one forgets the difficulties of it. I think one also forgets the musical brilliance of it. It's become a sort of, in, in England, certainly an English ritual. I remember doing it at school um, when I was a teenager. It's one of the earliest things I sang as, as, a, as a tenor. Every valley, every valley shall... 
shall be exalted, shall be exalted. Um, I've always admired his singing, I've always admired his, his intelligence, his use of text is always just fantastic. And uh, to have Ian singing Handel with words by Milton or uh, from Ovid, you know, it's, it's like the best of all possible worlds. Handel's music was the first music to be played continuously with no revival. There was a Handel commemoration, I think, in the 1780s. Uh, and Handel's music has been played from Handel's death right through to now. It's never had to be rediscovered. Um, and that's both a wonderful thing, because we have so many performance traditions available, but it's also been one of the reasons we've always, we're always trying to go back to a sort of new Handel, which is the old Handel. Okay.